These are the hardest Pokemon related decisions that you have to make as a Pokemon player. Picking your starter Pokemon. Now obviously, most people don't find this that difficult, since everyone eventually has their favourite starter of each game. However, this decision can become harder, especially if the person doesn't know what the Pokemon is going to evolve into. A lot of the times, people pick their starter team, and then end up switching when they see the evolutions. What can also make this decision harder is if your favourite starter from multiple regions end up being the starters of the game. How are you going to pick them? And if you want to make this decision even harder, if you could only pick the same type of starter from now on, for example if you pick grass, you can only ever pick the grass starter for any new Pokemon game you play, or old one, even if you don't know what the Pokemon is, which type are you going with? Pokemon Black or Pokemon White? And when you pick? You have to stick to the sequel, so if you pick black, you have to pick black too, and if you pick white, white too. When I first played these games I picked white, then black too, because I preferred Zekrom to Reshiram. However, the legendary kind of switches between the games, so I guess it might depend if you prefer black and white one, or the sequels. When a new Pokemon game is about to release, and all the new Pokemon have already been leaked, are you looking at the leaks, or are you going to try and go in blind? On the one hand, it can be very irresistible to see what some of the new Pokemon look like. On the other hand, if you already know what they all look like, the experience of playing the game really isn't the same. For me, I do spoil myself for what the starters become, but apart from that, I try to go in completely blind. And as someone who's done this with the past few Pokemon games, I can say the experience of going in blind is so much better than knowing what the Pokemon are. When there are multiple Pokemon you want to use in your team, but they share a type. For example, I know for a fact that a lot of people really wanted to use Seraledge when it was announced, but that might have been a bit annoying for people who picked Fuikoko as their starter, especially when Skeledurge shares both of its typings with Seraledge. If you're someone who doesn't care about the typings on your team, this might not be a problem for you. As someone who likes all their Pokemon on their team to have different types, it can be a pretty hard decision to pick. For example, if you wanted to use Scovillain on your Scarlet and Violet team, and you're someone who doesn't like to have repeating types, you kind of have to pick Quaxley, or not use the starter at all. You want to have Charizard as your starter in Kanto, but also want to use Arcanine? Can definitely be a pretty hard decision. What Pokemon to use the Master Ball on? Unless it's Gen 1 where people will just throw the Master Ball at Mewtwo. I can guarantee that a lot of you still have the Master Ball in your bag. As good as a Pokeball the Master Ball is, it really doesn't suit a lot of Pokemon. If I got like a Caterpie from Wonder Trade and it was in a Master Ball, would I really want to use it? So people end up just saving their Master Ball and never using it. But depending on your game, if you had to use it on something, what Pokemon are you going to use on? Maybe the box legendary of the game, save it for a shiny Pokemon, or just keep it in your bag to never use it again. Picking your favourite Pokemon from the favourite Pokemon picker. I know for a fact that everyone who's used this site has at one point or another been stuck on two Pokemon, having no idea which one to pick between. Everyone knows what their absolute favourite is, but when it comes to like the top 10, putting Pokemon in an order can be an almost impossible task. Would you eat a Pokemon? And if so, which Pokemon would you eat? I'd personally 100% try fried Combuskin. That sounds delicious, not gonna lie. If you had $500, would you rather buy a PlayStation 5 or Giant Mareep? I think the answer is obvious. Picking your favourite Pokemon of each type when multiple Pokemon share that type. For example, some people might say their favourite flying type is Staraptor, but if they like Charizard more than Staraptor, does that mean Charizard's their favourite flying type? Might not seem that hard of a decision at first, but if we're being real, Picking Charizard as your favourite flying type does feel a little bit of a cop-out. If you're speedrunning a Pokemon game and trying to get a new personal best score, and then you run into a shiny, are you catching the shiny or ignoring it? Oh, shiny! Shiny! F*** this! F*** this! I love this! Oh! Oh! I love that shiny! F***! 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 I hate this! Picking which version of a Pokemon game can sometimes be a hard decision. Some people pick depending on the box legendaries, some people want to know what the exclusives are, maybe even the Pokemon Professor. Like if you prefer Kyogre to Groudon and want to play Sapphire, 
but you really, really, really love Mawao, that's exclusive to Ruby, it can be pretty difficult to pick. If you could pick one Pokemon to have in real life, only one, which one are you picking? Your favourite Pokemon? A Pokemon that can transform to any Pokemon, like Mew or Ditto? A Pokemon specifically to make you rich? Arceus? Because it's the god of all Pokemon? There are a lot of choices to pick from. If you had to join an evil team, which one are you joining? And bear in mind, when you pick the evil team, you have to dress up like them, you have to use the same Pokemon they use, you have to abide by their rules, you have to have the same beliefs, you have to rule under their leader, so maybe not the most straightforward question. So again, which evil team would you join? And why is it Team Skull? Out of every Pokemon you can pick from in the Mystery Dungeon games, which Pokemon would you become? Keep in mind if you evolve, you would become their evolution as well. Not only that, but which Pokemon would you pick as your partner? Also keep in mind, in the Mystery Dungeon games, when you become a Pokemon, your partner can't be the same type as you. So, which combination are you picking? Additionally, in the Blue and Red Rescue Team remakes, your characters wear a scarf, however when you evolve, you lose it. Which really sucks. So, would you rather you and your partner evolve, or stay as first stage Pokemon and keep your cool scarf? If you could only pick the red versions of the games, or the blue versions of the games, which side are you on? Team red or blue? If you come across a shiny that for whatever reason you can't catch, are you fainting it, or running away? I've always found the decision of picking a specific Pokeball for a specific Pokemon sometimes to be a pretty hard task. So for example, which Pokeball do you think best suits Pikachu? The Ultra Ball is technically the Pokeball that matches its colours the most. However, other balls that also suit it would be a Quick Ball, a Fast Ball with Lightning Bolt. What about Greninja? Obviously Dive Ball would probably suit it the most. However, the Luxury Ball suits its shiny a lot more. And if you were to breed for the shiny, the Pokeball would be passed down. So, which Pokeball would you rather go for? Going back to Pokemon games where HMs were a thing, if your starter is the only Pokemon in your team that can learn a specific HM, are you going to use a HM on your starter? Especially if it was a game where HMs couldn't be forgotten, like in the Gen 1 games. If you have Blastoise as your starter, chances are you probably didn't have another water type on your team. So, are you teaching it Surf? What if you started up with Charizard, and no other Pokemon in your team could learn Cut? You really gonna use Charizard as your cut user? In the Gen 3 games, there were three water type HMs. If you started with Swampert, and none of your other team members could learn these moves, you're really gonna have three HM moves on one Pokemon, especially if it was your starter. Picking your Pokemon Go team may have been an easy decision at first. However, if the mascot Pokemon changed from Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres, to Raikou, Entei, and Suicune, would you change your Pokemon Go team? If I'm being honest, if Raikou, Entei, and Suicune were the mascots for the Pokemon Go teams, I would have probably picked Team Mystic. If the mascots changed permanently, would I change my team permanently? I have no idea. When you make a Pokemon team, do you base the Pokemon on how much you like them, or how likely they are to win you battles? And, if you could only make one of these teams from now on, and only ever use them in every Pokemon game you play, which one are you going for? This is a pretty easy question for casual players, but competitive players, maybe not as much. If you wanted your favourite shiny Pokemon, would you rather spend hours upon hours trying to find it legitimately? Or would you rather just peek a hex it in? The shiny you spend hours on will likely not have good stats, but can be incredibly satisfying to find, whereas hacked shiny Pokemon can have pretty much whatever you want. A difficult decision for some is releasing Pokemon. Sometimes it can be pretty easy, because you know exactly which Pokemon you're releasing, like breeding rejects for example. However, it can get to a point where you have so many rare Pokemon that you just need to make room for others. And to do that, maybe you have to release a Pokemon you caught that has sentimental value, whether it be one of the first Pokemon you caught, a possible shiny, or event Pokemon. If you had a rare TCG box or pack, are you going to keep it unopened and retain the value? 
Or are you going to open them in hopes that you find a card that's worth more than the box or pack? A risky decision that can either pay off tremendously or backfire. On the topic of TCG, would you buy a full box of Pokemon cards in the hopes that you pull a card that's worth more than the box? Again, very risky way to make some extra money, so it can be a hard decision to do at first. And the decision to spend $500 on Giant Mareep. Especially when you can buy a PS5, like I said before. And those are some of the hardest Pokemon-related decisions that Pokemon players have to make. Do you agree that some of them can be difficult? Or do you find most of them pretty easy? Either way, I do hope you enjoyed the video, and please leave a like if you did. Subscribe for more Pokemon videos in the future, and until next time, thank you so much for watching.